in the year 2020, uh, well, it wasn't a very good year for a lot of people, but it definitely wasn't a very good year for me um, in the fact that uh, I uh, collapsed in my home from sepsis poisoning. And um, when I collapsed, I wasn't found for five days. And uh, when they did finally get to me, um, they rushed me to the hospital and I died on the emergency table um, twice um, while they were trying to, because my organs were shutting down. The, when I first died, um, I was on the ceiling. I was looking down from the ceiling and I was thinking, hmm, you know, I was kind of laissez-faire about it. I thought, huh, I must be dead, you know, like, oh, no big deal. <laughs> and uh, the nurses and the doctors were running around my body, you know, and the nurses, the nurse was, one nurse was putting this needle into my arm. The other nurse was, uh, had this thing over my face and was squeezing it like a bulb type thing. And the doctor said clear and he hit me with those pads. Uh, on my chest and I remember initially shooting back into my body and I could feel my soul being real sick and my body being real sick again and then um, I all of a sudden boom I was back on the ceiling again well the second time now I start traveling through this long tube that maybe was I don't know 20 feet by maybe what seemed like 20 feet wide by maybe 20 feet tall. And it was uh, spherical in shape. And on the walls, the inside of the walls um, was my life. And as I'm slowly passing through this tube, it was like Technicolor on the walls, like a movie of all the happy things that have occurred in my life. Um, as I year after year after year, through childhood and then of course um you know teenage years and then you know young adulthood and so forth and so on down through the years and um i get to the point where uh i'm about 61 years old and there's this and i'm traveling throughout this entire thing i'm traveling towards this light and the light is very very bright and it's getting larger and larger through this spherical tunnel and as i get to the light i'm about 61 years old and um, all of the pleasurable things have played themselves out on the walls of this tunnel and now this big veil gets pulled aside and um and i'm very spiritually soul sick i guess the way to say it is my soul was still feeling very ill and um, I was thirsting. My soul felt like it was thirsting for something. And I'm, I felt like I was laying on the ground, but I don't know what kind of ground it was. And I could smell the ground, you know. Um, and somebody had me in their left arm and they had their left arm around me. And when I looked to my right to see who it was, um, it was Jesus Christ. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, that's that freaked me out. I mean, I was like, and I looked at the sky and the sky was a completely different color than anything. I did. And it's not like a sky blue, like we know here. It was a totally different type of uh, color, a color that I've never seen before. I, I've never seen a color like that before. Not in this realm. There's no colors like that here. Um, and it was just gorgeous. And. Uh, Jesus lifted me to my, where I was uh, at a sitting up, you know, um, on my uh, fanny, I guess I was sitting up and, and he, he had a wooden spoon and he dipped it down into a wooden bucket that looked like maybe it was really old and it was a big bucket and the spoon was big, but it was a spoon that looked like a, a, a gourd like somebody hollowed out a half of a gourd and he dipped it down into the bucket and it looked, you know, and he put it up to my mouth and he said, uh, in the name of my father. And he poured it down my, 
my throat and I was like I mean it's, it was ice cold and it felt so refreshing to my soul I mean I could not believe how refreshing it felt and then he dipped it in the bucket again and he said in the sun he poured it down my throat and again I was um was like getting a double shot of of uh you know of refreshment then he dipped it in the bucket again and he poured it over my head and he said and the holy spirit and it flowed the water flowed over my head down my face down into my soul completely and i could feel the love i you know as i looked into his eyes i could see so much love and compassion and kindness and generosity um that it was it moved me my spirit i mean it just moved me completely my heart grew i i felt like my heart grew like 50 times its size and he helped me to my feet and there was this gorgeous rolling hills um of beautiful flowers and beautiful plants again colors i've never seen before here jesus lifts me up and I see this huge crowd of people and I mean probably I don't know maybe 10,000 people in this field just you know hundreds and thousands of people you know way way back and up front is the latest relatives of mine who were had passed crossed over and they were there and uh I got a chance to see uh, my mom and my dad and my aunts and uncles and and uh, you know people that uh, and uh, you know pretty soon I got a chance to meet them all. But immediately to my left, though, when I first when he first lifted me up, I saw a huge angel, and I had never seen an angel before, only in pictures and stuff on Earth. And I looked at this angel, and he his wings were just so pure the white of them was so pure and and the feathers were just so pure and white and it was huge wings and uh he had a beautiful blonde hair and it was wavy and uh he it, it came down kind of over his eye the i remember and it looked almost windswept um I guess that's the only way to explain it, but um, he had an armor chest plate on and armor anklets like over his ankles and he had a sword on his left hand side and he smiled at me and I said, I said, you know, Jesus, my God, that's a beautiful angel. Who is that? And he said, that's Michael. He said, that's my archangel. He's the one that brought you here. And I was like, huh? You know? And then I got to thinking about it while I was there, and I thought, you know, this must be heaven, you know. And I said, Jesus, is this heaven? He said, yes, it is. And I said, Jesus, I said, I'm not worthy to be here. I said, I, you know, I, I all of a sudden I started feeling guilty, you know. And I, I said, I really probably shouldn't be here. I was a sinner on earth, and, you know, I, I did things that I wasn't very proud of, and, I said, I really, you know, I, I'm not worthy to be in your presence. And he smiled at me with that loving smile of his and, um, his eyes, you know, caught mine. And he, he said, John, he said, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And I thought, I wonder what he means by that. Cause I, at that time I didn't know, you know, since I've been back, I, I looked it up in the Bible and he did say that, you know, but I didn't know what it meant until I got back. But um, he said, John, I'm in my house, in my father's house are many mansions, he said, and I go to make a place for you, for your family, for all your friends and their families as well. I want you to rejoice because you are my friend and you're going to heaven. That's for infinity. That's forever. And um, I got a chance to meet uh, St. Francis of Assisi. 
and I and I also got a chance to and I recognized him because you know he looked like a a a, a monk you know he had a a robe on and it had the hair you know missing in the back and uh, the circle you know missing and and uh, but he had a monk with him that I didn't recognize and they both had the stigmata on their hands um, and on their feet and Jesus did too um, but and Jesus's hands and feet and his side uh, glowed same thing with these saints um, their hands were the, the, there was just like a piercing light coming from their hands and their feet and Saint Francis spoke in Italian to me which initially I didn't understand until I got back and then I had to research it what he said but he said uh, in Italian he said uh, it's nice to meet you my brother in Christ and Padre Pio gave me a hug and I didn't know what his name was um, until I got back and researched who he was from his from the you know I didn't know who he was and then I found his picture and I said oh my god I met that guy in heaven and so he said the same thing to me and he gave they both gave me a big hug Jesus led me up to this crowd um, and I met my mom and my dad and I hadn't seen them since they crossed over and I hugged them and uh, my mom was so happy to see me and she gave me the biggest hug and my dad too and uh, I saw my nine-year-old niece who had died of a diabetic coma uh, mm -hmm. when she was nine years old and she said hi Uncle Johnny and gave me the biggest hug and she was an angel when she was on earth before I before he led up to everyone he told me he said John he said I want you to know something he said I and this is the tr the message I want to get across to everybody he said John I want you to know something he said, I'm not very happy right now with the way the world is. He said, there's way too much hate in the world. He said, and that's due to Satan. And he said, I'm, I am will be coming back. He said, but he said, right now, evil reigns. He said, on earth. And he said, I'll be coming back. And of course, I got to thinking about that. And I, when he said that, and I thought my initial urge was to say, when? But I, I stopped myself. He said, I'm going to send you back. And I want you to give a message to everyone on earth. He said, this may take you a while. He said, he said, you know, rest assured when you do cross over. And he said, and I will have St. Michael come and get you again. He said, but when you do cross over again, he said, you can be rest assured that you're going to heaven. He said, but I could... But he said, I've got a big mission for you. It's a big task. And, and I want you to tell people to love one another and to take care of one another and to be kind to one another and to always love one another and look out for one another and to love each other as I love them. Same love that a young three-year-old would bring to their mother or father that love that innocent you know love that's the lo way Jesus wants us all to love one another and that's the message I'm trying to get across to everybody in this world is that to love one another I don't care what continent you're from I don't care where you live I don't care if the government there is you know democratic or communist or whatever you have to learn to love one another and take care of one another and look out for one another that's the key message here in all of this and I was taken aback by the fact that he said you know I got to send you back um, after he mentioned all of this to me and I thought oh boy how's this gonna work even though I was overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit um, I fell asleep uh, in the in the field I got a little tired and I laid down and fell asleep and when I woke up um, I was in ICU I was back on earth and I had one of those things in my mouth helping me breathe and 
my daughter and my son were looking through, it was COVID time. And my daughter and my son were looking through the glass at me. And, you know, um, in intensive care, and they were both crying. And I gave them a thumbs up. And they both smiled. I could see they were smiling underneath their masks, you know. And that made me feel good because they knew that I was going to be okay. If you just live humbly and, and live your life for God, and pray every day and tell God every day that you love him. He knows you're a sinner. He knows you're going to make mistakes. You know, he does. You know, he knows that. He knows all of that. If we were perfect, we'd be up on the cross. But we're not. You know, we're all fallible. And we all make mistakes. And um, Jesus wants us all to know that he loves us all very much but he wants us all to learn to love each other and that's the key, that's the message